and Shaq. Everybody in here is supposed to say Shaq. I'm talking about the most dominant. Listen, when we played them, we, we could have got them. But we ran into Shaquille O'Neal in his prime. Like the... Killer, killer. Never, I never, <laughs> hey, I've never, no, no. no. never seen Jersey, you go by. Jersey. Man, round my Jersey. way. Round my way. Round my way. The dudes used to call me Baby Shaq. And that was like the big they, they didn't call me nothing. They didn't say Jordan. None of that. When they used to call me, that means a little dude, a dude at your size, dominating the game. Couldn't nobody do nothing with Shaq. It's a fact. It's a it won't even close. Don Shaq is about to push that motherfucker around down there. I ain't Shaq. Huh? I ain't Shaq. But it was. Like I said, I ain't Shaq. My first year we were playing, and <laughs> he kept posting up. But they kept fouling him, so he kept going to the free throw line and kept missing him. And so he throw the ball out to me. I'm not throwing that shit back in there. Right? <laughs> so. I kept shooting him, right? So we get in the timeout, and he's like, hey, hey, uh, hey, I'm open. I'm like, okay. And so we go out, and same thing, come, hey, 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 I'm open. Okay. There you go. <laughs> come back in, hey, dude, you got to throw me the ball. I said, man, fuck that. Get it off the rebound if I miss, bro. <laughs> you told him this. First year, 18 years old, man, 18 years old. <laughs> and I must have been out of my damn mind. This is the dude, though. You know what I mean? Even though you got that mentality, you know, this is that one that you that you really admire and 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 um and respect as dominant on both ends of the court. And um I used to brag to my friends a lot and say, you know, like after we played the Lakers, you know, I get to the crib and be like, yo, you seen I laid Shaq, then you <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, you seen Shaq try to get that, and I put that thing high up off the glass on him. You know what I mean? And 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 that 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 gave me added confidence to myself. To whereas I felt like if I can score over Shaq, I can score over anybody. His dominant physical presence made him an immovable object. I think in my lifetime, probably the most dominant basketball player I've ever seen. I mean, it was out of my out of my height, weight uh, league to try to emulate his game. Um, you know, I, I was a guard growing up and then became a forward, so I never tried to emulate my game after him. But I admire what he was able to do out on the floor. Um, you know, by pure force and dominance, and his ability to uh, play at that speed, um, to have that size, and, and to carry that type of force that he had. You know, bringing in Shaq, I think, with his dominance and his presence and his his experience, that he can help me play into late June. I mean, because that's the only reason I train. It doesn't matter um, who's on my team. I hope everybody has that same mentality that, hey, you know, we start in October and we don't end until June here. And if you're not ready to go for that long, then you're in the wrong place. But as impressive as he was in college, when O'Neal hit the NBA in the fall of 1992, he would embark on a mission to become one of the most dominant forces ever to play the game. When Shaq came into the league, he had such a great passion and enthusiasm for the game. With his size and strength and mobility, it was something we really hadn't seen. O'Neal runs the floor, takes it all the way! Man, it was a number of, a number of bigs that were hard to guard Shaq. Uh, was some damn near, damn near unstoppable. Here's Shaq, look out! He was uh, one of the strongest players I ever played against. But the way you try to play Shaq, it's not physical. If you play physical, he's going to destroy you. Man, I, I, I can't leave without bringing up uh, Shaq. I love him so much as a person. Um, obviously the most dominant Big man we've ever seen, ever. When he went up and dunked on David Robinson. Oh, I thought, he, I thought he broke every bone <laughs> in this man's body. When it became official that this is the guy that you're going to play with, he is coming to Miami, what was your reaction? 
Uh, well, first, my reaction. Well, I was a little sad at first because I knew I was losing my buddies and, and Lamar and Karan and Brian. Um, but at the, on the other end, I was very excited. I mean, I'm playing with one of the greatest players ever to play the game. Now, he, now he's saying, you know, Shaq wanted on on the back on your back. Do you think you could have won that without Shaq? No, not at no. that time. No, that I was young in the league trying to figure it out. So right. I needed somebody like Shaq to help me, you know, give me the keys and uh, let me drive the car. So I appreciate him for doing that. When Shaq was here last time, he said that when he goes to a restaurant, he asks the waitress how much, or a waiter, how much he would like her to tip. And then whatever amount they say, that's what he will tip. Have you ever seen that happen? Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> he, does, he doesn't tip like that. I mean, doesn't. I mean, you're talking about the same guy. We were doing a tribute to uh, <laughs> John Glenn when he passed away, and <laughs> Shaq says, I wonder is it closer to the moon or L.A.? And we say, like, what do you mean, close to the moon or L.A.? He says, when you walk outside, you can see the moon, but you can't see L.A. <laughs> uh, and yeah, so it's got to be closer to the moon. This is the guy I work with. <laughs> He thinks it's closer to the moon than L.A. because you can see the moon when well, you walk Well, he is outside. very tall, so maybe to him it is actually hey, closer. Hey, he's no, hey, listen, listen, I love the guy, but he's no rocket scientist. <laughs> he's no rocket scientist. Nah, I ain't no Shaq's today. I mean, unless you're playing Joel and Beat or Jokic or some <laughs> but... <laughs> nah. Ain't nobody banging like that. Like... I'll probably expend more energy chasing little guards around and banging in this series. I mean, you, know, you still got to box out and rebound and stuff, but ain't just like posting up and bodying me every time. So, nah. Thank God Shaq ain't in this series, though. <laughs> <laughs> He's huge. He's menacing. He really just attacked the rim. That's a match, Jack! And even Shaquille! Impressed with that one. Oh, oh, what a dunk! Now, the, did you know Dame Lillard was gonna drop your name in that check this track? No, I didn't. I ain't. That's that's all rap battles. I ain't got nothing to do with rap battles. <laughs> I don't know how to rap, but uh, no, I didn't. I went on Joe Budden's podcast when I was doing a press run for my uh, album that I put out this summer, and he said, "Who's the best rapper out of the NBA?" And I said, "Me." And he said, "What about Shaq?" And I said, "People view Shaq as Shaq." not as like an artist, which wasn't a, a knock on Shaq. I just think he's a, a major celebrity. So people looked at it like Shaq is doing music. It wasn't like he's just another artist. Um, and I also mentioned that he was like the pioneer for um, athletes doing music and kind of breaking over into that and being commercially successful. But Shaq was offended by that and he put a diss track out. So when he put his out, I just responded. And then after I responded, there was like time in between. Um, and then I just put another one out. So, you know, I put the second one out before he had a response and then he put another one out. But it's not like a, I don't got no beef with Shaq or nothing like that. It's like, he was the first one to do it and I'm, I'm current. So we shot it out. Shaquille O'Neal is the most dominant force I have ever seen in the history of basketball. I only got tapes of Will Chamberlain. I saw Shaquille O'Neal. Shaquille O'Neal at 325, 350 pounds is the most dominant force I have ever seen on a basketball court. With uh, Shaquille, Shaquille didn't have quite the same athleticism that Will had. He had the bounce and he had the, uh, the speed. But he didn't have the endurance that obviously by the 48 minutes a night that we talked about. Um, he had a jump hook, whereas, you know, Wilt didn't have a jump hook. He had an array of shots. He had a hook. He had a finger roll. He had a turnaround jump shot. And uh, uh, Shaq was a post sprinter where he'd go down and get in the lane ahead of the crowd. And, and Wilt was never, you know, much of a post sprinter. He used to take his time. In fact, when he rebounded, a lot of times he'd make the guards come back to him to get the ball, so he'd be down there when the ball got to the other end of the court. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because we're both terrible foul shooters. But uh, other than that, uh, uh -huh. Sha Shaquille and I is like comparing me with Clark Gable. <laughs>
Mm -hmm. In this case, I'm Clark Gable and he's, uh, he's me. <laughs> <laughs> he uh, plays an entirely different type of basketball game. Mm -hmm. than I do. He uses his physicality mm -hmm. and he's a big, strong young man and uh, that works well in today's game. Mm -hmm. If he was facing me and other guys of my time, not so, not so good. I mean, I'm a guy bench pressing around 600 pounds when I was at my 600 best. 600 pounds? Yeah, right. So he really just took the lead by storm, but he did it in Shaquille O'Neal style. He was just as big off the court as he was on the court. And when he went from Orlando to the Lakers, LA just loved him.